The iPad was never meant to replace a laptop. It was made to live alongside a computer and phone, but be better at some key things. The hardware is on par and sometimes exceeds the Mac, but it was always held back by software until iPadOS 26. In this video, I'll go over my experience of using the iPad as a laptop and how it fits in my workflow. So let's get into it. Okay, I have the 11 inch M4 iPad Pro with 512 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of unified memory. And this will replace the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, 1 terabyte SSD, and 32 gigs of memory. I also have the Apple Pencil Pro and Magic Keyboard. I know a 13 inch iPad would have been closer in size, but it's just too big as a regular tablet. Alright, the first thing I did was set up the iPad to mirror the Mac as close as possible. Just about every app on the Mac dock has an iPad version minus a few. So I have things like Files, Twitter, Safari, all the way to Notion, Photomator, and Final Cut Pro. I even added a downloads folder. All of the home screen apps are gone with a couple of widgets to make things less empty. As for my desk setup, I have two different ones. My main workspace has a CalDigit TS4 dock, and I have several items connected to it. A 32-inch LG monitor, Shure MV7, Samsung T7 SSD, and an Ethernet cable. And what's nice is that a single cable plugs to the iPad and everything just works. I also have a Magic Trackpad, MX Mechanical Mini, MX Master 4, and an MX Palm Rest. The iPad is attached to a bank's magnetic stand since I'm using these wireless peripherals. My second setup, which is mainly for gaming, is a lot simpler. There's only a 32-inch LG OLED monitor, USB-C to DisplayPort adapter, and a cable for charging. I work here for a change of scenery and use the Magic Keyboard for any input. So I don't do anything too crazy on a Mac. It's just for everyday stuff, work life, and content creation. When I'm using the iPad in this laptop mode, I use apps in full screen, which helps me focus on one thing at a time. And when I need to open more than one app, I can resize the windows by dragging the handle. I also have display zoom set to more space so I can fit more content on the screen. On a Mac, I normally have several apps open at once. Notion, Music, Mail, Messages, Safari, Twitter, and Finder. And when I try to replicate this on the iPad, it's a little more cramped. I will have Twitter, Safari, and Notion in a three window layout. But I can't do this on a Mac for some reason. They just overlap each other. When connected to an external display, it functions just like a Mac. The cursor looks and feels a little bit different, but the menu bar, traffic light controls, and dock are all here. The best new feature in iPadOS 26 is the redesigned windowing system. I have a separate video about my top 5 favorite features, so I'll leave it in the cards and link it in the description box below. For everyday things, iPad apps are basically the same as the Mac version. I can scroll through my Twitter timeline, browse the web in Safari, and plan some content in Notion. But there are some things I can't do. The Files app handles basic file management. It's a lot better, but there's no app installation or system files. And in Safari, I can't inspect elements on a web page. These are minor use cases, so I can live without them. On a Mac, 8 gigs of memory would have been limiting, but on an iPad, it's good enough. For work, I use Safari, Microsoft Excel, and Word. It's just data entry and writing reports, so nothing that the iPad can't handle. Excel on Mac supports pivot tables, which used to be a web-only thing. And Word is fine for documents. These apps aren't as feature-rich as their desktop versions, but they still work pretty good. Macros aren't supported, and there's no copy as picture command. Office for iPad requires a paid subscription, and it's the mobile version of the apps. If I wasn't into content creation, then the iPad can replace a Mac. But based on the apps I use and my workflow, it's almost impossible to create a video from start to finish. As I mentioned before, I use Notion for planning everything, video ideas, deadlines, and scripts. I also use Safari and YouTube for inspiration. But when it comes to photo and video editing, the iPad is missing some features. On a Mac, I use Pixelmator Pro to create thumbnails. I can add layers, make quick selections, and add text. But on an iPad, the closest app is Photomator, which is more of a photo editor. I can make some color adjustments and crop, but that's about it. It works fine for some of my thumbnails, and the rest require an image editing app. For videos, I use Final Cut Pro. 
but since I've recorded log, I can't edit them on the iPad because it doesn't support custom LUTs or effects. When I import clips, they use a the default LUT, but there's no option for a custom one. I also use custom effects for a quick way to edit. I have things like fill screen, Ken Burns, and color wheels. At least I can use the default LUT and do some rough cuts. After I'm done, I can export the project to a Mac. After using the iPad as a laptop, there are some pros and cons. The iPad can adapt to your needs. When you're done working, you can remove it from the Magic Keyboard and use it as a normal tablet. It's also touchscreen, so it's more fun interacting with your content using your fingers. The iPad has some native apps like Instagram and YouTube instead of using a web browser. Gaming is also a strength. Mobile games like Nikkei, Wuthering Waves, and Silent Zone Zero all run on the iPad. These have PC versions, but a Mac isn't meant for gaming. The iPad is also super thin and light, so you can carry it everywhere with you. But once you add the Magic Keyboard, it weighs almost like a MacBook. The iPad is fun to use, but there are some things I had to deal with or get used to. It's hard to open the iPad with the Magic Keyboard one-handed. There's no place for your finger to lift the screen. If you're not at a desk, the iPad is top heavy, so it may tip over. You need to keep the iPad open to use an external display, so no clamshell mode. There's only one port for data and the Magic Keyboard is only for charging. And you can't play music while watching videos. So can the iPad replace a laptop? I think it can for most users. There's resizable windows, a menu bar, and a real cursor. For more professional workflows, a laptop is still the better choice. But what do you think about the whole iPad laptop replacement? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified when I post new videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!